Good morning, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, this is another illustration basically of um, offsetting the voltage of a function generator. Only this time we're going to be reading the voltage of the function generator on the meters of my uh, topward power supply. Uh, the right channel over there that says 3.7 volts at the top that channel is not in use, so don't worry about it. What I'm going to be doing is demonstrating the voltage reading on the topward power supply. Now this is a good high quality bench regulated current limiting constant current constant voltage power supply. But what I want to do is just show you the effect of hooking a function generator to the power supply. <laughs> There's my F43 function generator, okay? It is set right now to produce a 1 kilohertz signal, a positive going square wave, and the output is a little bit under half of its uh, po possible outputs. And there's the scope trace right there. The zero baseline is the center graphical marker, and we're looking at that at 5 volts per division through a direct hookup, no attenuation to the function generator. Okay, so we have a 10 volt, 0 volt signal from the function generator, and it's at 1 kilohertz. You can see that that's the case because we are at half a millisecond per horizontal division. So one full cycle takes one millisecond, okay? And uh, I have the output of the function generator here coming off this BNCT going down to a uh, patch cord. Uh, let me try this with one hand. Anyway, it comes out to these these wires right here you can see that I have the negative lead hooked to the power supply. So now I'm going to take the positive lead and hook it to the power supply, like that. And now you see that we have 4.4 volts indicated on the power supply meter, even though I've got the knob turned all the way down. And look what happened to the waveform. Uh, it's now feeding the internal circuitry of the power supply, and it has sh collapsed to a little bit over, a little under 5 volts, right, with this kind of a ripply profile there. Okay, so we're dissipating power from the function generator inside the power supply, probably into its bleeder resistors. Okay, so now what I'm going to do now is turn up, well, wait a minute, so let's disconnect the function generator again by removing the positive lead. Voltage goes to zero. Now I'm going to turn up the power supply output to, let's say, two and a half volts, okay? Two and a half volts, right? Now I'm going to hook the function generator up again. Like that, okay? So 4.5 volts is coming from the function generator. And then when I unplug the function generator from the power supply, we see the voltage drop to the power supply's set voltage. Right? You got that? So these meters on a power supply are designed to read the voltage across the output terminals. Duh. Usually that voltage comes from the power supply, but it doesn't have to. If the circuit is providing more voltage than the power supply is set to, the power supply's meter will read that higher voltage. Then when you unplug the power supply, right, when you, when you remove the power supply's output so that it's no longer connected to the circuit that's supplying power, you get the power supply's set voltage reading on the meter. Okay? So this process is actually equivalent to putting a DC offset into the function generator's output when we hook a power, uh, power supply in series with a function generator, we raise the function generator's output by the voltage of that power supply. In this case, I've hooked them in parallel, 
So we're really changing the dissipation of the power supply and function generators power outputs and dissipating those powers inside each of the two instruments. All right, thanks.